We have some updates on the crisis at the southern border, an immigration deal drafted by Senator Chuck Schumer and James Langford seems dead on arrival in the House as congressional Republicans balked at what they saw as another mass amnesty bill. Chad Pergram writes on X that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is supportive of Senator Langford's work to, quote, finalize the most substantial border security policy in 30 years that would come not a moment too soon. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has issued an emergency injunction allowing Border Patrol agents to cut wire Texas had installed along the border near Popular Crossing at Eagle Pass. Litigation continues over other Texas immigration policies, including floating barriers in the Rio Grande alongside the incarceration of illegal immigrants by the state. Those cases have yet to reach the Supreme Court. Yeah, so this decision uh, made a lot of conservatives on social media very angry yesterday. Uh, so it's, a, it's an injunction. The decision, mm -hmm. part, they haven't actually heard the case that will take place. But in the meantime, um, those, uh, those barriers, those security measures that the state erected can be taken down by the federal government. It was a five to four um, vote to, to, uh, to allow the federal government to do that with um, uh, Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett and uh, Chief Justice Roberts and the the liberals, Elena Kagan, Sotomayor, um, uh, uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson on one side, and then you had um, you had Alito, Gorsuch, uh, Thomas. Oh, actually, well, there was no, it was one more. I'm, maybe I'm saying I'm misstating who. Maybe Kavanaugh uh, was on the side too. Roberts and Barrett who am joined I missing? the three liberal justices. Roberts and Barrett, so not Kavanaugh. Roberts and Barrett. Um, so I, that was perceived as kind of a as a betrayal by, uh, but from uh, the conservatives on social media. Obviously, the issue is um, the federal, federal government rights. claims they right. have the jurisdiction, and it in the previous Supreme Courts have recognized that ultimately they have jurisdiction on the on international border. Yeah, issues. but this is a pretty so. clear federal preemption issue. I'm surprised, frankly, it wasn't um, uh, more lopsided holding. I mean, just take for a second, like imagine for a second that Texas is a democratic state. Imagine a world where democratic Texas says, we're going to have open borders. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly would you feel different about whether or not federal policy should preempt state policy, given the kind of national implications of what a state on a border might do? So this doesn't mean that, you know, federal policy is going to be one thing or another. And it certainly isn't an argument that no one's going to be losing the border. It's simply an argument that if you're someone who's hoping Donald Trump is going to win or is looking at polls that's indicating that Trump, Donald Trump is going to win, that the president of the United States' federal mandate, the congressional mandate, is what decides border policy, not whoever happens to be in control of a state that happens to be on the border with another country. I think on the constitutional merits, you're correct. Um, that's probably frustrating and cold comfort for um, for the state of Texas that feels like, you know, that the federal government is not willing to expend the resources to police the border, so we will step up and do it, and now you're saying we're not allowed to do it, which, again, I, I think uh, technically is, in fact, the case. That's how what the Supreme Court decided temporarily in this injunction and is probably ultimately what they will decide is that it is a federal government issue. The federal government needs to fix the immigration system. It's their failure to act that puts us in this position. I mean, but here's the issue. Biden has requested a $14 billion spend for the border. It's not getting passed because of Republican obstruction. So you can say that there's not enough commitment, there's not enough spending, there's not enough investment. But if, at the end of the day, what has been reported as happening is that Republicans know that being able to make a lot of hay about a border crisis helps them electorally, and they'd rather push this issue until the election in order to get the benefit of being able to say Joe Biden isn't doing anything about the border, which really raises the yeah. question about whether or not Republicans in Congress right now are putting the interests and safeties of, of Americans before or after their political futures. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a bipartisan failure and a failure not to pair it with some improvements to the immigration system because— Frankly, I mean, I have some, you know, I'm not as, as enthusiastic about the wall or very, I mean, people, people have found ways around this. I don't want to spend a gazillion more dollars on security measures that are, that fail or are overcome when what we really need to do is fix the underlying incentives and the system for people to come here so that they're not, they're not coming here in that way, and then we're spending all this money on security measures that don't even work. I mean, it's a vast, vast I mean, border. I, it, look, the problem is that the underlying incentives, I know as much as 
some Republicans like to frame it as uh, the incentive is that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are standing at the border with a big welcome flag saying, everybody come to America. No, that's not, no, that's not what I'm no, saying no, at all. I yeah, said some yeah. Republicans. You don't even identify as Republican. But the, 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 the reality is the incentives are created by the fact that we're the wealthiest country in the history of the world that has spent so much of its time and energy and money uh, applying sanctions to the global South, including South and Central countries in South and Central America, toppling governments, fomenting coups and the like that have created disastrous conditions for people who are, frankly, in walking distance because of the nature of the land bridge to the United States of America. And either you're going to cure that or you're not. But it's not going to happen by simply muscling up the border because the incentives are there. People live in such terrible conditions that they are willing to leave their homes, everybody they know, everybody who speaks their language, and drag their children across in, in, in humane conditions in order to, for the hope of a better life. So between between that, that, I think, fundamental issue that's not being really addressed by either party and the fact that part of what's precluding this $14 billion package going through is Republicans saying, well, we don't, how are we going to pay for it? And trying to make it contingent on other cuts to other policies, some of which, I got to say, benefit the very Americans that they're saying are being hurt by immigration, these social safety net policies. That's why we have this uh, uh, lack of traction here. I mean, I would like to simplify, clarify and simplify the actual system for coming into the country legally, because it is hopelessly confusing. You should, I, I encourage everyone who thinks like, oh, why don't they just come here legally? Sit down, go through, um, you know, take a look at the website, all the different ways in which you could possibly qualify, and then you're not qualified. And you, I mean, it costs a lot of money. You have to hire an attorney to do it. Yeah, um, I, and it, it, is, it takes forever. A small number of people um, are admitted that way. Um, it is it is Byzantine and it is unnecessary and it's bad. I mean, for for people on the right, it's an example of government bureaucracy getting in the way of people peacefully Look, promoting prosperity in their own. I, I, I've handled a pro bono immigration case successfully, uh, and it was asylum claim on the basis of uh, persecution in the person's home country. And the aspect of it that I found to be most Byzantine and what took so long is simply waiting on a response from the administration office. The backlogs are incredible because we cannot get any funding to hire more administrative law ju judges and the personnel who administer these cases. You can't not spend money if you want there to be an asylum process that actually respects American rule of law and the values that we have emblazoned on the Statue of Liberty. There's no shortcuts around this. And I'm sorry, this is one of those instances where if you want the government to work effectively, and in this case, the government being the entity that patrols our borders, you have to fund the government. And so I, I'm really interested to see what Republicans do about this. One right-leaning commentator in particular, I should mention, uh, weighed in yesterday on Twitter, Tucker Carlson tweeted the following. He said, so it's unanimous. Everyone in power, from the White House to the hedge fund managers to the Supreme Court of the United States, has decided to destroy the country by allowing it to be invaded. That leaves the population to defend itself. Where are the men of Texas? Why aren't they protecting their state and the nation? Calling, it seems, upon individuals to take to the border and take things well, in their own hands. Fault the, the Supreme Court emergency injunction was specifically saying, don't do don't that do because that. you don't have the authority. Wow. And yeah, I never, I, I don't think very fondly of calls for other people to commit potentially crimes. Um, again, that's a, this is increasingly a habit in some right-wing discourse to say, yeah, you, you, there's a faux populism to it. You go right. you know, march in the street. You go take up arms. I'm going to be tweeting from the comfort of right. my home and, and my warm and right, fireplace. Right-leaning <laughs> podcaster um, Bridget Feisty replied saying exactly that. Why aren't you, bro? Get down here and fight the federal government <laughs> like a man. Well, remember, listen, yeah, and especially because many of those same people will point out that the person inducing you to commit crimes at the right-wing militia event <laughs> is often a fed. <laughs> Tucker Carlson is Ray Epps. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. More rising right <laughs> after this.